All right, so, okay, so hi everybody, welcome. Today we have with us Lisa Kelly from Kelly Wellness Consulting Incorporated. And as you know, I'm Sherry Mraz, the cooking yogi is the name of my business. And um, once a month, I like to bring on a guest speaker to have them bless us with their um, knowledge and experience. So today, we're lucky to have Lisa. I think the thing that attracted me to you um, from the very beginning was your level of, of professionalism and everything. Thing. When I first met you in this in the in Karen Paddock's step program, um, it sounds like weird step program. Step into more profit. <laughs> um, everything you were putting out was so beautifully polished and just as I said, really professional. So it makes sense that you're corporate because that is the image that I I think of when when I see you. Oh, thank you. So for most, some of you who may not know, Lisa is a path, um, been a certified, well, you still are certified, mm -hmm. but a Stephen Covey presenter, mm -hmm. which makes her a very organized person too. <laughs> <laughs> she is obviously a corporate wellness coach. She is a personal trainer. She is certified in EFT, a yoga teacher. She has a master's in adult education, and she's a registered holistic nutritionist. Did I miss anything? <laughs> well, there's a few more, but I think that's sufficient for now. <laughs> that's good. You did a good job. But, um, but they're all really impressive. So I thank you for being here. Really thank you. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, and so... Um, I like to start every single time. I don't know mm -hmm. if I warned you about this. I think no, I... Well, this is my second presentation with you. So I so suspect I've... Know. Yeah, I think we've covered it before. <laughs> I like to... Um, because everybody has a different way of learning. Mm -hmm. So I do think that um, I get a huge uh, span of what people f is most helpful for them. So what would you say is your favorite business building book? Well, that's a really challenging question because I have so many and some that I keep stockpiled on the top of my desk. But one that I'm reading and one that I read prior to this one, I'll show you both of them. One is called How to Build a Thriving Work Culture. And of course, being a workplace wellness consultant, uh, this book is very near and dear to me. And through our program there in January, I referred to it constantly. And I actually recommend it as a supplemental read to all the materials. And so it really talks about how to create healthy, vibrant organizations. So it's called How to Build a Thriving Work Culture, or sorry, How to Build a Thriving Culture at Work by Rosie Ward and John Robinson. So I really recommend that if you want to even get a sense of what workplace well-being and wellness is all about uh, as a means of determining if that's an area you want to, to focus on and move your business or add on to your business. The other book that I'm reading now is actually, uh, and this is not a new one, I think it's, I don't know, how many years, 2000 something, I can't remember, but it's uh, Stephen Covey's um, the, the Eighth Habit. So he had another book after The Seven Habits, The Eighth Habit from Effectiveness to Greatness. And again, it, um, as with his other books, he really comes from an organizational leadership development background. And in as much as everything you learn, you can apply to both your work and your personal life. This book really does uh, drill into areas that you can focus on in an organization to help make it a stronger organization and from a great to a effectiveness to a great organization. So it's a really, the, both of them are, are some new books that I've, I've just read and, and quite thrilled with. What, Lisa, what's the first one, the exact title again, Thriving in? How to Build, let's see, How to Build a Thriving Culture at Work. And then St Stephen Covey's was The Eighth Habit. Okay, I'll try to um, grab the link and uh, put them in the chat for everybody. Yeah, great. So, um, thank you. How about your favorite resource? What do you find yourself going to the most for business? To be honest, um, I would have to say probably a social media platform being LinkedIn. And as I've said in my program on several occasions, without LinkedIn, there would not likely be a workplace and wellness ambassador program. 
And the reason being is I met and people approached me who were in the business that saw what I was doing and were quite keen to learn more. And from that, I established a number of um, a number of associates that I do have now and are actually integral and help me develop the program and actually help co-lead the program. So I'll speak to a little bit more on that later. But uh, yeah, I mean, LinkedIn, even just this morning, I had a very prominent, I won't say his name, but probably like one of the grandfathers of workplace wellness approached me and commended me on the program. And I'm going to follow up, of course, on that like you do if you're, you know, a business minded person and capitalize on that or try to and look at how we can, you know, um, help support each other in our causes and workplace wellness. And um, I mean, I'm just a little tiny person compared to this guy. But you know, I think uh, he opened the door. And so I'm going to take it and walk through it and use it as an opportunity to build my relationship with this person. And, and that's, you know, um, part of what we talk about in our marketing component of the ambassador program is how to create, you know, good mutually beneficial working relationships with your contacts so i would have to say to your question linkedin without a doubt has been my my go-to resource right now and i i find that interesting because i think um i can't speak for everyone but a lot of us leave that as like the last place that we start mm -hmm. so um yeah and we'd spend a lot of time in our program talking about it because i find for example a lot of the market and uh, clients you have have a, you know, are uh, the health and wellness coaching market and they're predominantly in the Facebook arena. But I really encourage our trainees and our ambassadors when they finish um, through our marketing coaching with them to really start getting involved. And so much so I've hired a marketing, she's called the marketing mis minstress or mistress, and I've hired her to do a, another LinkedIn workshop to add on to what I've already added in our program. So it's really critical to, to get involved in LinkedIn. And to know how to use it effectively from a research, marketing, network building, and uh, promotional tool. Right. That, that's what social media, I think everyone needs to realize. It's not you, where, what you're trying to market to, you pick mm -hmm. the, the uh, platform for it. Mm -hmm. like LinkedIn mm -hmm. is definitely corporate. Like you said, Facebook, you're going to get one on one people or some group programs. Mm -hmm. so. But even um, when you say LinkedIn is corporate, it is. But it's still an ideal means to promote yourself because there's still a lot of individuals mm -hmm. that if you have online health and wellness programs, um, then it still is a good uh, opportunity. And it's not as crowded as you would think uh, as say with Facebook because Facebook you have a lot of the health coaches that are sort of are all, all the same groups and are actually vying for everyone's you know um, spending dollars or what have you in this this arena so there's a little less competition in some respects when you go on LinkedIn in that regard Interesting. I never knew that mm -hmm. thank you yeah I really didn't realize so um I graduated from your program and most of you know, probably know that and it was amazing because um, I, I had personally in 2007, 2008, I started presenting some corporate programs. They were not programs, what I thought was a program. It was like a, maybe a one day thing and, and I didn't really know how to lead them to something else and to grab them and keep them engaged for any length of time. Mm. So the, your program actually helped me tremendously with that to know how to do a campaign and how mm -hmm. to do some other stuff that I don't <clears throat> want to share. But um, I, I'm, I'm going to let you actually run into this. But um, what, if I could just ask, what do you think overall makes a corporate program successful or not because you see them all over the place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for sure and that's a really good question and I think as you said especially in the health coaching field many have had or not many but some have had some experience with doing the lunch and learns predominantly or a fitness exposition or what have you at an employer location but really truly if you really want to move into and transition into workplace corporate wellness then it's so much more, as you learned in our program, it's so much more involved and detailed. And um, in a minute, I'll probably bring some PowerPoints up that will show you a little bit about the context of workplace wellness. But really, truly, it's involving everything. It's, it's going in and really understanding what the employer's needs are. Because we may have a lunch and learn that we think is the greatest and best thing, but that's not the predominant need of that organization. And so you need to go in and connect with them and really identify through an organizational audit, which we talk about in coaching the program and give you tools to do that. And also the employer's 
um, you know, a lifestyle questionnaire, needs assessment, health assessment, and then also a needs and interest survey. So there's like three almost different components before you even go in and start marketing your services to an employer. And of course, those things, you know, you charge back to the employer for them and say, or some of them you may want to do as a freebie initially to get into the employer and say, I can do a free organizational audit for your company. And let's go from there to see if my workplace wellness programs would meet your needs. And then moving from there, then you can start talking about um, developing a workplace wellness policy with them, looking at helping them set up a wellness committee. And what you're doing then is setting the whole foundation for further work with them. And so once you get a point person in place and a committee that you're working with and you get buy-in from senior management and sign off on potentially doing some contract work for them, then you can go in and start looking at developing a couple campaigns during the year. And within those campaigns, there may be some lunch and learns as well that you'll do. Or you may, as part of your contract, uh, promote and, and distribute uh, an employee newsletter that you create. So there's so many different opportunities that, you know, and we just talked about that in our marketing workshop this past weekend with our ambassadors, right, as you know, as you were involved in. And, uh, you know, we create different bundled packages and programs that we talk about in our program. And, and I can show you in just a minute through the uh, through PowerPoint. Yeah, I know Stan, Stan graduated also, but he mm -hmm. didn't actually get to make that marketing class, which was um, awesome because I think that um, at least in my experience and what I get a lot of questions about all the time mm -hmm. is they just, coaches are frustrated because they just want to make money. Yes. <laughs> And so having something that's a package mm -hmm. of pain allows you to increase your income. And we did talk about that in the marketing and I really appreciated it because you actually did give us some real tools of how much like our industry, industry, I can't speak now, standards for charging and different mm -hmm. ways. because it's different than when you're working with clients one-on-one -on -one or in, in regular groups. So yeah, that was um, really helpful because I think if there's anything as far as the health coach goes to be able to, um, you know what I find funny? Everybody, I think, wants to leave corporate as a health coach because they don't want to be in that world. But then you end up going back to it because, or you may end up going back to it because you have the opportunity then to bring what you've learned right. and, and change corporate. Right. What I like about it and what I like about working in this industry is that you get the best of both. You can still... Because I loved, I mean, I was a corporate trainer and learning and organization uh, development and uh, also did, you know, my health and wellness on the side and had that best of both and decided at one point to leave corporate full time. But I really missed it. I loved all the strategic planning and all the things that were involved. But I didn't like all the politics and bureaucrat, you know, that went, went with it and all the admin reporting and what have you. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still a little bit of that when you get into corporate wellness but not to the same level and you can define things on your own terms and set your own hours with corporate and um, really establish yourself professionally and be able to walk away from it. And also no one can take that job away from you because once you have yourself in your own business, right? And as we well know, as we get into, and I'm finding we get into our senior, you know, work years, um, when you lose a job, it's that much harder to rebound and go back into the market. So when you're self-employed as a workplace wellness coach or an ambassador, workplace wellness ambassador doing workplace wellness consulting, you have the option of still working with private clients if you choose and still working in the corporate and, and supplementing your income. Or you may choose to do full-time corporate wellness work if that suits you, right? Yeah, and something you mentioned on our marketing class, and I don't know if I'm overstepping people mm -hmm. mentioning it, but that's okay. Um, something that you mentioned was really intriguing to me because I don't know that it's um, something you necessarily would automatically think of. You know, you're thinking campaigns, everything else, but the consulting fee alone and being able to engage them for like a year, mm -hmm. and maybe as you mentioned, maybe one day a week they have you, whether it's for a presentation, they they mm -hmm. are coaching is available. And, you know, the kind of industry, industry is, why can't I say that word today? Standard to maybe charge 25000 for the year. And, mm -hmm. and it's one day a week that you allot for that, that corporation. So there's so right. many different ways to approach it. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I know we kind of just tossed around like how you can do it virtually and stuff. So there's a lot of opportunity. So I'm going to just let you take it. I know you have um, a PowerPoint. I don't mm -hmm. I probably don't want to share your entire pearls here. So if you maybe just want to like skim through so that we can see um, or you can share with those who haven't seen it. Sure. Um, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Okay, so thank you, Sherry, for that. And um, this is a presentation I will be doing, and I just recently created for my own webinars to market the program. But I thought I would, um, you know, if you wouldn't mind indulging me for a little bit, and I'll use this. And and certainly anyone in the group ha having any questions around um, workplace wellness, by all means, just uh, you know, show your hand or speak up, and I'll answer your questions to the best of my ability. So. Um, just, just, um, can I just interrupt one second? Sure. And if, for those who haven't used this before, on the bottom where there's, on the very bottom, it says manage participants if you hover over it. If you click on that, you have the ability um, to raise your hand if you, you will see. Hmm, where is it? I think if they click on their name, maybe Sherry, does it click allow you? Name and it and it should, I think. But anyway, also yeah. there is also the ability. Um, there's a little chat button. So <clears throat> if you on chat, you can ask questions. You can type in. So we don't. We want to keep this really casual and look. Mm -hmm. I think we should maybe go through it kind of quickly. Mm -hmm. so we don't have everybody sleeping on us. But yeah. um, <laughs> but you can ask questions, raise your hand, interrupt, you can unmute yourself. We just want to have a be a conversation and then but you are recorded. So yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sherry. So <clears throat> what this slide shows here basically are the four pillars of healthy and vibrant workplace. So in our program we talk a lot about what's required in terms of organizational support. So in terms of how to get connected to the um, decision makers and the CEO or executive or senior management who would approve you to come in. And then, you know, obviously moving through the whole continuum here, we obviously talk about designing wellness programs and safety if that's relevant to your area of expertise. So really what's involved, if you'd follow the chart here, to really create a healthy and vibrant workplace, you need to get that organizational support in place. You need to um, obviously work with them and developing programs that best meet their needs. And then that in turn helps to create healthy work cultures, which in turn then drives employee growth transformation, um, helps create engaged employees. And really creating engaged employees is what you want because that is what's going to drive organizational growth and performance. And the more you can help drive organizational growth and performance in an organization, the more they're going to bring you back or the more they're going to refer to their business partners and affiliates or companies that they know of and, and, and so, so on and so forth. So um, just to move along then, so really our, our programs, we try and be very industry responsive and dynamic in our training approach. And so through, you know, our program, really what you want to look for if you're looking at a, a workplace wellness training program is you want to have a very comprehensive broad scope approach and so looking at um, how to as I said earlier connect with the C-suite how to establish what the organizational needs are how to work with them on setting up a workplace policy agreement how to then move into setting up a committee and then moving into campaign development all through to doing evaluations because you want to be able to capture how successful your programs have been whether they're a lunch and learn or a full-on program or a campaign or a year-long contract so that again you can measure how well you've done what impacts you've made in the organization and hopefully then get renewed work and contracts with the organization right so just briefly like what we do in our program we give you a, a quite a variety of tools and toolkits from modules to tip sheets to I um, brandable newsletters through to online discussion groups. And I'll just very quickly show you, for example, this is a platform, uh, our Rizuku platform. And so this is one of our discussion activities. And so here is all our participants from our former program sharing their resources and comments. And so throughout our program, we have these discussion activities and you'll have the modules and, and so on and so forth. And so we also have um, video conference slides and presentations and all the modules and everything. It's, it's quite, quite a comprehensive program. 
and you will not uh, you will not say that you didn't get your money's worth for sure. <laughs> hey Sherry, <laughs> if you get more than uh, more than you'll, you'll expect to get. So um, we have a marketing toolkit as well through <clears throat> a marketing workshop, and um, that you get certificate logos, um, templates, proposals. <coughs> Excuse me. You also get a done for you campaigns and. A big part of the program as well in the second half of the course is doing group work. So you'll develop group campaign projects and present them back to the large group all virtually, which is really a neat part of the program because you get to not only meet amazing people that you work with on your teams, but you'll also get to develop and then uh, progr programs that you can then use in, the, in real life in the workplace. And each of you get to... Um, are obtain everyone else's programs so that you have a toolkit of campaigns when you finish and then also in subsequent programs you will get access to every future program uh, campaign that's been developed by other groups so that's that's quite a nice feature of the program I think as well and if I can interrupt a second I just want to say and um, maybe Stan will even um, comment I think of all the you know hey the program is packed with information mm -hmm. And you do get your money's worth. But I think that um, the most important piece of it was really actually putting together the campaign in the group, as you said. Right. That right there, because we all buy programs, we all get a lot of information thrown at us. But when you actually have to put it into practice and build a campaign and right. working as a team, it was really, that was really cool. Well, and exactly, and thank you for that. And so the other thing about it too is um, when you go into an organization and you're working with a wellness committee, the group work we do really simulates almost working in a committee. And so you get that understanding of the dynamics involved and how to lead and especially like sure you were a group project leader. And, but you also, if you're a participant in the group, get to see how a group leader would lead a group in developing a campaign. Because these are sorts of things, like when you can go into an organization and really work with them on developing campaigns, and you get involvement, I call high involvement, high commitment from that workplace, you will get so much more involvement and support throughout the whole campaign delivery, which again helps drive workplace wellness and what we talked about, getting engaged employees, right? And so that... But another thing that seemed to be really critical that I had overlooked in my past was that you need to engage those um, high level and uh, the, the CEOs, yes. get them involved because then they're going to, um, if, if they're involved, <laughs> exactly. All, all the employees are going yeah. to be much more serious. So we talk about how to structure and we give you all the tools for structuring a kickoff event, for example. So it really behooves you and, and imperative to have senior management and maybe even ideally the CEO of an organization go to the kickoff event or we give you a, like a template, for example, on that a CEO can just sign his name to as far as you know, promoting and uh, encouraging employees to attend an event. So all these little nuances that, you know, without being coached in doing them or how to do them or that they're even important, you know, they all help to build your success, obviously, as a workplace wellness ambassador and a consultant. So here, for example, on this slide are um, screenshots of the different campaigns that were done. And what was really neat in terms of the four steps to financial well-being, they all put it in the context of, um, how you could become, um, you know, how you can improve your finances through health and nutrition. So like creating budgets, eating healthy. So it's really neat how that group did that. And were you part of that group or I can't remember which group you were in? Healthy Habits. <laughs> oh, okay. The Healthy Habits group. Yeah. And I love the way you created that logo. So it was really neat. I mean, I was really just really um, moved almost to tears, literally. Well, I'm a softie, but um, you know, when I got to witness the presentations from all the groups, and you know, Sherry, I kept saying, like, I was choking and really having a hard time evaluating all the groups because I was so impressed by the quality and the caliber and the standard that everyone put into their development. And then the professionalism that everyone exuded when they presented online. And so when you talk about virtual health coaching, you've already experienced that now. So you can, with a lot of comfort and confidence and knowledge, go into delivering workplace wellness or group health coaching on a virtual level to companies or to your private clients. Right. 
And, and Lisa, I just, you know, I, no disrespect to you. And I just want to be clear that everyone knows that we're sharing what you do at, with your program, but you could do this. It's a lot of work, but these tips apply to anyone. Like I know we have Pamela on there, even though we can't mm -hmm. hear her, she's a chef. If you wanted to incorporate cooking and you wanted to in, and have a wellness uh, campaign for corporate, you don't have to go to your program. You can mm -hmm. listen to this presentation and go, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I need to involve the CEO. I need to work with the HR person, um, have a campaign. So these tips are useful. Hopefully you don't really think this is just about doing yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved your program, and I yeah. hope everybody does it. No, but no, for sure. This information is just what you need. Yeah, you need so no, exactly, and and that's great, and I'm glad you pointed that out because um, part of what I'm doing is showing, obviously, what's involved in establishing yourself as a solid workplace wellness consultant. Uh, in my case, we, we call ourselves ambassadors, um, and our trainees, for example, can become either an internal ambassador with a company or work as an external ambassador as a consultant. And so by all means, but you know, again, these are some of the areas. And when we talk about stress management, that's a really huge area right now in workplace wellness. And so you'd be well advised to put that under your umbrella in your, your toolkit, if you will, right? Um, yeah. And then, you know, some of the areas, again, that are important in workplace wellness, as I said, are things like creating team synergy and team building, creating employee engagement. And what does that look like? Um, creating organizational supports and creating healthy workplaces from, yeah, as I said, stress management to smoking cessation, disease management, uh, financial well-being is another area. I even saw somebody the other day offering AIDS management, or AIDS education, um, cancer coaching prevention, you know, the list, the list goes on and on, right? Absolutely. I got, um, recently, um, which is interesting, but, um, for an addiction, uh, a rehab mm -hmm. to incorporate and put in, you know, yoga and stress management and nutrition. And so it can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be a corporation per se. Well, no, exactly. And so even as um, if you're going into an organization as a workplace wellness consultant, you may not, um, like, for example, some of our people may not coming into our program, let's just say my program, for example, would not have maybe a health coaching background, but they have um, strong uh, HR or leadership skills or consulting skills and, a, and, a, and an interest in workplace wellness. So they could bring in community people to the organization under their coordination as the workplace wellness. And, you know, sometimes workplace wellness coordinators in organizations don't necessarily have that health coaching background. Many do, but not all do. And they may have more of an HR background, but they at least they know how to structure a workplace wellness program and bring in those skill sets uh, and professionals, you know, to, to fill the areas that they don't have skills in, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, was there anything else? I mean, I could go on um, my program, but you know, obviously, but I don't necessarily want to do that. If there's some areas that uh, anyone has one thing, I'll just, um, yeah. I was just going to say, I'll just bring this up because I think this is pretty important. And um, obviously it's relating to our program. Uh, I'm getting some, okay. There's some speaking there. There you go. Um, are you still there, Sherry? Yes. Okay, so I was just going to say one thing that was really neat that did come out of our program, and again, it speaks to not just the work of our ambassadors, that they created these core values, and they help drive their work and set the standard for the work they do, but these are really core values that anyone going, I think, into workplace wellness should try to aspire to. Uh, obviously, they're unique to our program, but I think it's important to sort of just look at them. So. I think you really want to be an innovator, be forward thinking, and obviously be results oriented and performance driven. And that's the first one. And we put that number one. You really want to promote enrichment of body, mind, and spirit in everything you do. And, and there are some of the big pillars and cornerstones of workplace wellness as a whole. And, you know, you want to facilitate excellence and happiness. And you want to foster employee empowerment. And you want to cultivate change. And you want to honor work-life integration. And that's what we're calling work-life balance these days because, you know, we often hear, you know, some people still promote work-life balance 
lunch and learns or work life balance uh, workshops. But the reality is these days is that it's really challenging to to actually achieve a balance because there's no blend. There's everything's blended now. There's no definitive. Okay, right now I'm working and now I'm not. But what we want to look at is while we're you know from the time we wake to the time we go to bed, do we have how are we integrating our work and our personal lives? And is there a balance between it? So for example, for some people they may um, they may take you know with their employees blessing employers blessing. They may do some work at home at night, but they may take an hour or two during the day for personal needs. And so that's becoming more the norm now, too, that people are, you know, some are working from home or they have a more of a work-life integrated a style to how they, they do their work. And so how can we facilitate that uh, through the work we do as, ambass or as consultants in workplace wellness? And obviously champion lifelong learning is important, uh, being passionate in all that we do. Because we need to be passionate going into an organization, obviously, if we're going to hopefully um, inspire uh, others to, to make changes in their lives, um, personally and, and their workplace. And um, ultimately, we want to transform. We want to transform lives of those that we, we work with. And I think that's uh, really important. And I was really quite proud of our, you know, our group of uh, ambassadors in coming up with this core set of values. So thank you. Does anybody want to ask a question or make a comment? Because um, I have you muted, but like I said you can uh, just unmute yourself. By... Or, or is anyone in the group done? Any workplace wellness uh, coaching or consulting in their in their practice, maybe? Um, yeah, Lisa, uh, this is Stan. Uh, mm -hmm. I have never done workplace wellness in a... Um, how should I put it, a my own business kind of a way. I worked in benefits consulting for years, mostly on a pension side. Right. Um, but I did have to do the RFP sales part of it sometimes. And, you know, the uh, slightly different material that you're presenting, but the idea is the same. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I did not see your marketing, obviously, on Saturday as I was had another event. So right. I would like to see that. But the LinkedIn, you had mentioned that early on. Um, there is another course that you're coming up. I forgot the date off the top of my head, April, something that you have that individual coming in and doing. Mm -hmm. it. Yes. Uh, and uh, um, would, you, would you be able to talk a little bit about that, how, how, you, how you use it a little bit more? Well, LinkedIn, again, for example, if for those many, many not, might not know, but there's a lot of um, very valuable groups you can join on LinkedIn. And a number of them are very focused and actually use workplace wellness in their titles. So if you were to Google, or not Google, sorry, well, you could Google, but if you went into LinkedIn itself and typed in workplace wellness, you'll get a whole plethora of workplace wellness groups that will come up. So from that feature of LinkedIn alone, you can go in and join those groups and learn a lot about workplace wellness. And then also, when you're part of those workplace wellness groups, you can go in and directly contact with, make contact with everyone in those groups and, and invite them to be a contact of yours. So it's a really excellent means of growing your list of contacts in LinkedIn by just by going and joining groups on LinkedIn. But let's just say, for example, you know, one thing I caution against is going into LinkedIn, for example, and just joining all workplace wellness groups. Because you want to also go and join some small business groups or other employer groups that you can market yourself to, um, you know, because you can certainly market yourself to the workplace wellness groups, but you're sort of marketing to, you know, the, the choir already, right? Who a number of them who are already working in workplace wellness. But if you're trying to do use LinkedIn from a marketing perspective, you may want to broaden your reach and think about okay, who are some other groups that we would, um, that I would be well served to connect with and promote, right? And yeah, form relationships with, because LinkedIn is really about networking and relationship building. And it's an excellent means. And as I said, I've met um, some of the presenters in our program, because we have a lot of industry presenters come into the program, or I record them and bring them into the program. And uh, like from our last program, we have four industry speakers, many of whom I found through LinkedIn, and now their presentations from before are recorded and will be shared in future programs, as well as bringing in a couple new live presenters uh, as well. And just as I said earlier, my associates in my group um, that helped me develop and deliver the ambassador program, I met them through LinkedIn. So it's just an amazing, if you use it and use it well, and I talk about, you know, the goal of trying to make like one new contact a day 
and um, and always, you know, follow up with conversations with them so you can build a relationship and then eventually get to the point of saying, hey, by the way, this is what I do and do you think this would be of interest to your company or would you know of another company or someone else who I could, you know, connect with to, to promote what I do. And so, um, for example, last night through a contact of mine, within 10 minutes, I had 10 new contacts in Australia through a contact of mine. And uh, I'm going to follow up with them now probably next week after I get back from my holidays and just um, introduce myself, probably send them a personal bio page and uh, start talking about the ambassador program because that's what I'm doing, obviously, right now is promoting our upcoming program. Um, but you don't want to just jump in. Like, you want to give them some value. And uh, if you know anything about social media, you really want to give some value first. So I might just send them a tip sheet or an article I wrote and, and you know, present them my one-page bio and just give them something of some value first before you come right out and ask for, um, you know, whether they'd be interested in what you have to offer or not, right? Would you, um, I don't, I know you had kept it to graduates, um, that LinkedIn course that mm -hmm. you are, um, would you be willing to, because Stan's already going to be in there, so it would only be a couple of extra people, would they be able to take that course? Yeah, I think um, we should have some extra openings, so um, I'm not sure how many of our, you know, a cohort of ambassadors are going to be involved, I think, I know, a good percentage of them, but we still should have some openings, and oh, yeah. so, I would certainly extend it to the group uh, here and some other of your contacts if they want. And I think I made that offer to you before that anyone, say, who signed up for this, if they're interested, they could contact yourself or myself and express their interest, and I'll put them on a list. And uh, we're just finalizing the promotional material for that. And, um, and so uh, I believe the workshop is scheduled for the Saturday of April 25th. Um, and, uh, I think it's, um, uh, 2, 2 PM, I believe my time mountain Sandra mountain time, 2 PM. So I have to double check that, but I think that's about a two hour workshop for us. Yes. That's that. Uh, sorry. I think it's 4 PM for us then Eastern, right? No, it's the other way. Um, sorry. Yes, yes. You're correct. Yeah, yeah that would be correct. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so if you email it to me, then I can email it to them. I think I have everybody's email. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I have Mindy. I think I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, all right. Yes. Any other questions from anyone on workplace wellness in the group or any um, specific questions about my program or how to get into the field? And I just wanted to also say, while you're thinking on that, um, for those who attended today, um, and I may, uh, you know, I may extend this. I'll, I'll let you you decide uh, for people who registered but couldn't, I know there's a few that register that are working that couldn't make it. Um, I'll, I'll open this up, up to them as well. Um, I have like sort of a, a one-day bonus offer there that if they register for my upcoming program, they'll qualify for a two-hour group interactive business development coaching session. And that's tremendous. Uh, and that's going to be limited to probably about, you know, 10 to 15 participants, maybe about closer to 10. So, um, you know, so... <clears throat> excuse me, for those who um, would like to really get some extra coaching experience or coaching support, um, that's a free offer for those who register uh, for my program within the day or so. Okay, good. I'll put that on uh, our group, private group, and share. You guys are already free. So. I think Stan had another question. Sure. <laughs> um... I well, it's not so much a question, but I, I can't do the May one because of other commitments. Mm -hmm. um, and your next one, you think, Lisa, will be September? Any mm -hmm. idea? Okay. Yeah, um, it'll be sort of the mid part of September. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And just um, as well, uh, well, because I know this is going to be recorded, um, we're going into a three-level program in the fall. And so um, everything you'll learn now will be covered in the fall, but in the fall as well, for those, say, in the May program, they'll have the option of um, transitioning into our master certification as well for those who really want to go on and get an extra level of training. Um, and we're going to get into executive wellness coaching and virtual health group health coaching and really some more higher level detail specifics and a little more in program development 
Um, and that, that will take probably about six to eight months to fully complete, you know, from start to the end of the master certification. So that's going to be really exciting. And um, we've got some changes coming about. But in the marketing workshop right now for this May program, it'll be free. It'll be a, probably an extra cost or an added cost, or it may be built into the marketing master's program or for the master's level program. So I just throw that out there. Um, but as pilot participants, you, you get to participate again next year in, in what, you know, one of my offerings, as you know. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and then I just showed on the screen here. These were our lovely, and and we've got uh, Sherry here somewhere. Sherry, where are you? Oh yeah, you're on top there. And uh, and we've got Stan here there as well, and uh, a bunch. You may recognize some other people as well from the health coaching community. And uh, yeah, and so just an amazing, amazing group. And so these are I call them our future leaders of healthy and vibrant workplaces. And it was really interesting the mix. We had some HR people. Um, we had some nurses, occupational nurses benefits person like Stanley and who's also a health coach and a number of uh, health and wellness coaches and a really uh, really good dynamic group and um, yeah it was kind of sad to, to finish off our marketing group because we really became a good family but as we know um, we still stay connected and uh, we have uh, our Facebook group that we uh, connect through and we're all on there pretty well every day or every other day sharing resources and leads and helping each other with tips on marketing or proposal development and I'm, I'm really quite proud of the way the group has come together and, and stayed in touch through Facebook. And that will continue to grow as we have other programs, obviously, and bring new ambassadors into the, uh, into the Facebook group. Yeah. I, I'm, and honestly, you will. It's like, I don't know, um, with IIN, if it happened to people. But for me, there were some real friendships that have lasted mm -hmm. forever. And the same thing happened <clears throat> in your group. I really have some... Uh, people in particular even ones here um, yeah, yeah and um we i know we'll stay in touch for mm -hmm. forever and we've really supported yeah. each other um along the way with some other things now too so it's not just a work well exactly and then the other nice thing about training together in a group like this i guess uh, whether it's my program or wherever is that you can reach out and partner and so when we especially when we get into more of the virtual health coaching down the road then you know the world is your oyster when you've got online technology like this and you, know, you can go into an organization and whether you're doing virtual lunch and learns or virtual workshops I mean I've delivered deliver three hour webinars right with um, with each of you and and three hours goes by so quickly but it's amazing how um, like even my graphic designer from the UK I brought her in the other day to meet with you guys in our marketing workshop and she said that was my first time doing an online training and it was so exciting and she connected with people in Canada and the US and she was in the UK and so it's just such a an, an a powerful platform and environment that we have to work in today absolutely so um, Mindy has a question here Let sure me unmute her Hi um, yeah I have a question about how this would work with life coaching um, I came from a background of <laughs> trying to become a corporate employee and noticing that I totally did not work in that environment at all. Uh, my, my latest one was working as a, um, um, I think we were consultants or people, not consultants, but um, where they brought us in to a company and, and then we worked within the company, okay? Um, it was in a um, county a, you know, environment so that it was, mm -hmm. it was more of a you know public <laughs> servant <laughs> kind of thing. But there was a lot of bullying and, and all kinds of horrible. I mean, nobody was happy. You know, you get in the elevator on Monday and everybody's sighing and saying, you know, is it Friday yet? You know, and I was like, oh my goodness, I can't stand this. So you know, most of my life coaching has come from being in the corporate world and thinking. You know, how can I make these people happy to be here <laughs> every right. day? You know, because people go, I work 50 hours, I mean, 50 weeks per year so I can take two weeks off. And I said, are you kidding me? You know, I mean, that's your life. You know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even fathom it. So for, for me as a life coach, I would want to be, you know, looking more of like the life design, you know, emotional fitness, um, mm -hmm. that so how does that work with your program? And well, again, that's your area of specialty. So that's beautiful. And so you could take that. And once you understand the, the, the working dynamics of going in and doing workplace wellness programs, that could be your core area of specialty, right? Yeah. 
-hmm. and you could develop um, like for right now a number of ambassadors just to use this as an example uh, by certifying with us you can also become a stress master um, man stress management consultant and so that's going to be one of the careers especially through our ambassador program so for example life coaching and stress management go very well hand in hand right Right. And so, you know, as a life coach or as a wellness ambassador, you can structure lunch and learns or campaigns around, um, you know, life management, basically. Mm -hmm. And and whether you call yourself a life coach or a workplace wellness coach or what have you, right, you take all those skills you have as a life coach and, if you will, put together different programs and packages and um, you know any other skill sets and background training that you have and bring it to the employer so mm -hmm. yeah I mean you it, it very well well would would work uh, with your your area of expertise and then as well um, you know for example yourself you may want to position yourself as a uh, employer group health coach so or employee health coach and or a life coach I mean sort of um, you know and and sell your services that way and you could do it virtually um, you could market to companies who may be interested in having uh, some of their employees sign up or they may contract with you to offer one-on-one -on -one or group health coaching or sorry life coaching whatever you um, yeah so there's you know there's a number of ways um, stress management life management are huge areas right now that companies employees need help with mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, my book. great question, Mindy, because I I I um, used to teach yoga at a like, big I don't know Sanofi Aventis Pfizer like all these pharmaceutical aid places, and when I walked in there, <laughs> there would be thirty people in the room, and every week they would go like this when I walked in, and it was <laughs> I was afraid when I first got there because I thought. It's not a studio, you know, in the studio, you're thinking you can be so much more like, you know, peaceful. And I was trying to think, how am I going to make fit this to corporate? And then I realized they don't want you to do that. They mm. want you to do what you do because they're sick of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My, my book that's coming out is called uh, Stop Bending Over Backwards Trying to Please and Be Who You Are yeah. and Start Being Who You Really Are. And that en en encompasses not only just, you know, normal relationships, but relationships in the workplace. Exactly. You know, that was one reason why I left that. And, you know, I mean, one, other than I don't like going to work every day like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, one girl came up to me who was one of the bullies, and, and she said, um, I think you're leaving because you don't like the way I treat other people. And I go, well... You seem to have, you know, you seem to like it. <laughs> the way you do it. And, and uh, you know, she, she was just like, well, I do like it, you know. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, and I felt so bad for the people that she was tormenting, you know. But in that environment, you know, as an employee, they were not going to listen to anything I was saying. I'm, I'm listening to all these tapes in my car just to keep myself, you know, out of that environment most of the day, you know. And, uh and I, and I bring things up like the one minute, you know, manager and all this kind of like, we can really have fun here and still get the job done. And they're like, no, we don't do that here. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you probably come up. Yeah. And, you know, that's a really good example, Mindy, of how, for example, when you come into an organization, when you work with them right from the ground up and get them involved, say, as a wellness committee and look at what's going to work. And sometimes you got to really soft pedal it, right? You can't come in and say, oh, I'm going to be the latest and greatest and change your whole work culture right. you have to let it happen organically right and so you'll come in and you work with that organization and you let them you sort of you know put those little subtle ideas out there but you let them come up with the ideas and so they own it then right, right. and then you're there to help facilitate and guide but really let them think it's their ideas really which it should be and then you will help give them some context around it and say okay well if this is an area we want to change how about we look at this and sort of guide and then direct them and keep throwing them little bones and little ideas of what they can do and you know then say okay here are some suggestions one minute manager as an example and then let them pick from it and uh, they may well vary but if you come in and say this is what we're going to do then it's not high involvement high commitment right 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 yeah and it's like you know telling someone in your family 
can do it. If you're, if you work there, they don't maybe listen to you. It's like, you know, telling your mother or your father or siblings what to eat. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I love, I love when my family comes to me and they're like, I just read an article. You're supposed to eat this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, do well, tell. <laughs> I tried to tell you that eight years ago, but I think that's a great way to eat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know, it's hard to hold that back and not uh, say, I told you eight years ago about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, but Mindy, to your point as well, for example, like um, in life coaching, when we get into um, teaching down the road next year about when we bring in our virtual health coaching and our um, virtual or our executive wellness coaching, for example, like a life coaching could very much be um, a platform then for doing coaching of managers as well on executive level if that's something that appealed to you. And I think as coaches, if we can really effect and that's one of the reasons I really wanted to bring in high level management coaching for those who want to do that because I think if we can work with the high levels and get them on board you've got the rest of it it's easy peasy you know you can pave the way then and write your ticket for having you come into the organization as a whole and start doing workplace wellness mm -hmm. yeah. I love the title of your book by the way too <laughs> thanks I love it. I love it. I that. Um, you know how to get that. I'm I'm working with Create Space now and, and some other. You know, trying to get this, you know, published. Is it? Are you are you published yet, or you're in process? You're saying I'm in process right now. Okay. And I'm just finishing up the, the PDF, and and then but now I need to you know get somebody to Good do for you. I love it. And yeah. Yeah, and that probably will be another thing that I can use in the workplace. Exactly. I was just going to say that very wow. thing, same thing. Yeah. I mean, the same as I said to Karen with her cookbook, right? Use it as a lead-in to go into companies. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. I'm glad I came to this today. I mean, yeah. yeah. About oh, I mean, that could be a market. Like on your LinkedIn, when you do the banner for your LinkedIn, you could have a picture, a three-dimensional picture of your book. Yeah. And as a workplace wellness ambassador and use this in your company. And oh, I mean, I, my mind is just spinning with ideas already of what you could do with that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you know your book becomes your business card. And so walking into a corporation, mm -hmm. that is, it's so much gives you such wonderful Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Now my mind's spinning. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Where's lots to do, but um, you have to break it down and do step by step. And and Lisa is professional at that with the whole Stephen Colby thing. Yeah. And so we talked about this in the marketing workshop. Is first, you know, begin with the end in mind. And where do you see yourself? Where do you want to go? And and create I'm all about creating strategic plans and doing an annual plan and setting your revenue targets and and I think that's something really important we uh, we're going to get more and more into that in the program in the fall as well and continue working with our ambassadors around that because sometimes we tend to um, be running everywhere and get nothing accomplished uh -huh. and so you really need to look at what your what your primary interests are where you see your strengths lying and for example, if you're a health and wellness coach, are you going to do a hybrid of the private market and the corporate market, which is kind of challenging, but you can do it. Um, or are you still going to just stay in private or are you going to move yourself more into corporate wellness coaching and then put some strategic goals around that? And each quarter, what do you want to have uh, manifested or achieved and, you know, use them as guideposts for continuing your business growth, right? Mm -hmm. Um, can I ask another question? Sure thing. The, the one thing that I've been thinking about recently is using my book in, um, in the school system. Mm-hmm. And that's a corporation, right? Well, it is. And, you know, and that's a really good point, Mindy, because um, when we think sometimes workplace wellness, we tend to think pure companies, but the schools could definitely use it. And that's where I cut my teeth years ago, too, in workplace wellness, is I brought a nutrition program to a school that I actually worked at, but I had a part-time health and wellness coaching background and, and company as well. So I had two jobs. And so during the daytime, I just saw how unhealthy and unfit the people were that I worked with at the school system. And so um, I set up a fitness. So as a fitness trainer, I would do exercise classes in the afternoons with them. And then lunch hour, we would get together and do a nutrition session. And I would do a little weigh-in with them. And then we had a celebration ceremony at the end and recognize people's you know, health achievements 
And so, you know, there's a lot that, yes, there's a lot you can do in the school system by all means. And, and there's a lot of schools out there. So I would suggest like approaching the school boards themselves and seeing if you can make inroads through the school boards. Mm -hmm. And then whether you target and position your book and do it, say, under the auspices of workplace wellness to their teachers and staff, or whether you do it from a wellness perspective to the student population, right? But you may want to start first on working with the teachers and getting a buy-in from them and, and then uh, developing like a little, sometimes with books I've known, like I have a friend who does uh, Spirit at Work, sort of a similar workplace wellness, but she calls it Spirit at Work. And so she created a book, but now she goes out and does seminars and workshops and programs with organizations and schools and companies uh, that relate back to her book, right? And she developed a little workbook from her book. So you may want to look at developing a little workbook as well. Well, actually, the work is a workbook. It's got six different uh, you know, um, you know, things that they need to fill out to be okay. able to finish this book. Right. Yeah, I after it has something that they can download and I okay. put them in the back of the book in case somebody couldn't download or whatever. You know, in a print book, you would leave them in there. Right. Um, so... The thing that there's another thing that's running in my head. I'm I'm glad you're allowing us to talk. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, my husband. I I, I wrote a book before about the uh, surviving. Just so you know, this is all being recorded, so don't share anything that you don't want to. We could we could end the recording if you want. Um, we yeah. Could, okay. we could stay on. We could wrap up with yeah. your um what you're offering and the recording and stay okay. on for a minute. Mm -hmm. you want yeah. To yeah, so I, if I could just for, you know, obviously put in a last minute plug. So um, for anyone who does get the recording, if you will, that, um, you know, I'll allow a day or two um, to avail of this offer here. But, um, you know, I've sort of capped it at about 10 person limit for this offer. Uh, so um, to encourage, obviously, registration. And um, so it's sort of a one day bonus that you'll qualify for this two hour group coaching session of a, a very small group so we get a chance to be really interactive and help support you in your business development once you finish as a an ambassador so and really help you get set up in your business mm -hmm. awesome. yeah. Yeah. so thank you lisa thank you for being here thank you everybody you're welcome well, thank, thank you for having me i am going to post this in um the um, wellness resource, Facebook, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever group it is that I run that I can't even remember the title of. <laughs> and I'm post okay. it in there. And we also have a, a weekly, um, I think you guys know, we have a weekly mastermind that I run that mm -hmm. um, other than when we have a guest, we meet every week and we really hash this stuff out so that people have an opportunity to set their goals and then achieve them. And when you set your goals in front of everybody else, mm -hmm. and um, just keeps everybody on target. Oh, for sure, for sure. So um, I po I'll post it in there also, so you may see some. Right, and so anyone wanting, if, for example, if they do want to register for the program, um, you can access our registration link. Um, this brochure here you see in the picture image is on our homepage at uh, kellywc.com, as I've said there in the ads or the promotions. So. They can just do that through that means. All right. Thank you for that clearing. Mm -hmm. So, all right. I'm stopping the recording. Have a beautiful day, and but we'll stay here. <laughs>